At this point in the course, that pre-course assessment, the median grade on, out of 30 is eight. So. The lowest anyone has done in the pre-course assessment is one. And the best, that was the worst, the best was I think at 27. As in today or ever? Ever. Oh. Out of the, that's how, sure. many, how long I've been doing this. Okay. Computers. I see a number of people have laptops up. If you are taking notes on your computer, I understand. But if you're not taking notes on your computer, there's no reason for it to be open. And especially flashing back, I know none of you have done this, but I had a student working on someone else's homework in my class. I thought they were taking notes. Yeah, that's good. Getting, getting the benefit of the doubt. What about taking notes from the computer? As in. So for example, I have in Google Sheets, I have something that is like all the qualities of a periodic table. In Google Docs, I have a bunch of vocabulary that's in chemistry and biology and all that stuff. What if I keep it open for that? So you can refer to it? Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Cool. Uh, course entry assignment. Uh, as of yesterday when I looked, about 4.30, four of you had done it. It is a hoop that you have to jump through, or strongly recommended that you jump through. It just makes life easier if you just go into Blackboard, do the course entry assignment. For those who have done it, did any of you put false? Wondering, did they give you any feedback at all, or did you just click it and submit, and that was it? It said submitted. But was that a nod? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, the lab. Do we have labs on Thursday? Is that us? Still burning my schedule. Yes, our lab is on Thursday. So the lab should be posted. It will be under, I think I have listed modules one through six labs. If you go in there, the first lab is measurement and significant digits or something. I think there's only one lab visible. Uh, I would like you to have that printed out before you come into class on Thursday. Also, the last page of that is a pre-lab, and I, that is to be handed in when you walk in. It's going to be done before. It will require, there's some stuff in there that I'm not gonna go over explicitly, but there are videos that I have done to help with that. If you have trouble finding those videos, ask. Uh, the videos, I think, are under module zero under math help, or I forget what the way I wanted it. I think there are only two entries, two things under module zero. One is chapter one, and the other one is review or background information or something like that. Let's see, so that was the pre-lab right now, and oh, and also before Thursday. Watch the lab orientation video. There's two. Of, there are two of them. The non-graph one definitely do before Thursday, and the graph one will you need to do before Thursday of next week. Non-graph one before Thursday of next week. No, graph one before Thursday of next week. Okay. Non-graph one before this Thursday. Okay. Well, we needed a graph paper. No, no, you'll okay. be doing graphs on the computer, so okay. it will produce it for you. Actually, I have had students hand draw it. Uh, the first time I taught basically this class, 
they were draftspeople. I mean, they were studying draftsmanship. So that's if you want to do it by hand, that's the level of quality I'm expecting. Strongly recommend use a computer to do your graphs for you, unless you're just like spending an hour doing it perfectly by hand. Yeah. Each to his own. Other questions? Yes, I'm Stephanie. I'm so sorry. Did you say they're non-graph one or graph one? Non-graph for this week. Graph one next week. Or just watch them both this week and get them done. Other questions? All right, before you, I have two ordinary cubes. Uh, this one is aluminum and this one is, I believe, brass. This one weighs about four times this. So this one is definitely heavier. I, can I hand it to you for you to confirm, if you wish? You just trust me. The one on the right is this? Steel or iron? Brass, I think. Brass. Okay. Yeah. Aluminum. Aluminum. Lucky first. Okay, cool. I'm going to drop them at the same time. Based upon the answers that I saw for the question, first question, there's a wide variety of opinion about which one will hit first. Anyone willing to bet your grade right now? No one's confident. I didn't hear you. Anyone willing to bet your grade right now over which one will hit first? I would say momentum, possibly the brass, because it's heavier. Um, but not willing to bet your grade? No. Okay. I think it it will definitely hit the ground harder though. Oh, yeah. Different question. Uh, let's see if I can do this a little better than. All right, here we go. Your mind's blown. Well, all but I think two of you. We'll get into explanations about why later. All right, I need three volunteers. One, two, three. Between the three of you, decide who is the weakest. Okay. Or if you prefer, the two that are the strongest. And we're gonna head out to the hallway. Why was she able to touch the rope, or at least get her really close without much effort? Leverage. What do you mean? The further away from the point, it's much easier to have sleep by leverage work. Say that? So, what? So, the further away. But that's generally if you. That's if you've got something with strength in this way. And the rope doesn't really have much strength going that way. Tension near the center? Uh, tension should be about the same there as throughout, throughout the entire rope. Okay, we'll get to that in chapter four. Stephanie? Was this the area such a long rope that, like, the amount of force or, like, a small area is very little? So the force sort of fades as it gets farther away? Is that what you're going for? or? The fact that she was concentrating the force in a small area. Yeah. Uh, so she was applying, all the way it's going to come down to force. Uh, the force is not really dissipating significantly throughout the entire room. Uh, Talon and Robin were pulling with probably the same amount of force uh, as each other, and Mara, not as much. But she was still with overpower them. Moran, you had your hand up? Well, I was going to say that. From my perspective, it looked like one of them was giving out quicker than the other, so that thing was like they weren't giving the same amount of force on each side, so that's why it was easier for me. But you're saying that it's about the same, so I would yeah, yeah. And if I guess Robin 
sort yes. of fell forward a, a couple of those times. Uh, if suddenly she loosened up, then it wouldn't have been as hard for him to pull. So the tension would have changed the same close enough. Eva? Um, could it possibly have something to do with like, the direction of the force where like, you have two people pulling this way and then she's pushing down? So it's it is exactly to do with that. That's the key. Talon and Robin, most of their effort was fighting whom? Each other. Each other. Yes, because they were pulling this way mostly. Moran was pulling this way. There was nothing initially to oppose her. Now, as it goes like this, Robin and Talon are now pulling to have a slight upward trajectory, upward pull. And so they do start to pull to make it more difficult for her. I think you found it harder at the end than at the beginning? Yeah. Because the more upward they're pulling, the better it is. That's why it's a long rope, so your ankle can only get so much. The key thing here, the takeaway, is that for some measurable quantities, direction matters. Now for some quantities it doesn't. If I ask how many people were in the room, it's 12, I think. There's no real direction associated with that. It's just the number. But in terms of pulling, force, direction matters. Matter the, not just direction. Direction matters and the, how much they were pulling matters. So there was two aspects to it. There was the quantity, amount, magnitude. generally the words I use, and direction that both matter. Now if they both matter, we are dealing with vectors. Vectors is a lovely thing that will pop up throughout the entire course and next semester or the next course. Matter of fact, physics. Now, if the direction does not matter, if the direction is irrelevant, so only there's only a magnitude or an amount, that's the kind of math you've been dealing with since kindergarten. What are those called? You've been doing it since kindergarten. Surely your kindergarten teacher used this word. Could you repeat the question? I don't think I registered it yet. If you're dealing with a quantity where direction does not matter. What is that called? It's not a vector. Is that like just... Pardon? Is that just a quality? Like no. A feature? No. And, and I'm not necessarily expecting people to have told it. When I, I did teach elementary school for a year and I made sure I used this term because I wanted to... Is it a science term? It's a math term. Scalar. Scalar math, that's the math you've been doing for power rule of your minus the first couple of years. Vectors is potentially new to some of you, or all of you. How many of you have dealt with vectors before? What kind of vector? Any type of vector. I've heard of vectors that carry diseases. Ah. Vectors that represent... Physics specifically? Quantifiable measurements. An abiotic force. Is that what you're referring Pardon? to? An abiotic force. Is that what you're referring force. to? Force. Force is a vector. Now, what I'm getting towards is that there are certain words that immediately, as soon as I use the word, we're dealing with a vector. Other words, as soon as I use it, it's automatically a scalar. And then other words, which could be either. And you have to pull the context. So here are the vector terms. Force is a vector. Position is a vector. Displacement is a D there. Is a vector. Velocity is a vector. Speed. Scalar terms. Speed. So things that move. 
No, that's not what I meant. With just speed, you're measuring how fast you're going, but you're not measuring where you're going. You're not measuring direction, which is why it's not effective. Right. Mm -hmm. You get a speeding ticket, you don't get a velocity ticket. Velocity equal. I don't think any time you've been caught. So vector is like a fluid thing. Not no. necessarily. I mean, you were applying a force out there. Not really a fluid involved. But like it can. can be moved. Like velocity and force that moves. Position displacement that can be moved. Speed it. The speed is the moving. Is that no? Um, I think as we get into the more detailed definitions, hopefully that will become clear. Okay. These are words that describe motion. There are vector words that describe motion. There are scale words that describe motion. Force does not describe motion. It just describes uh, influences that one object exerts on another. So what is we, it? We can't categorize it by it describes movement or not. If, if the movement you're describing involves a direction, you're probably better off using a vector. OK. What is a vector, then? Like, it's a mathematical construct in which the magnitude and direction both matter. OK. We will get into... So amount, we'll magnitude, and direction are not examples of vectors, but they are a vector. They, a vector is composed of a magnitude and a direction both. Mm -hmm. So if you pulled with 50 newtons of force at a 45 degree angle, I've expressed a vector. Okay. If I said I pulled with 45 newtons of force, well, I just told you the magnitude. I just told you a scalar. Yeah. Give so you a scalar is so a scalar plus direction is just a vector. Because amount magnitude yeah. is only a scalar. Yeah. Okay. I think I can go with that. Uh, a couple other words: distance is a scalar. Mass is a scalar. What about all of, all of the metric things? All the metric things. So, meters, liters, watts, joules, all that stuff? Those are units associated with, I mean, you could have, a force could be in newtons. Uh, well, newtons is a unit of force. Um, the unit does not, I could also use pounds, the, I mean, the unit itself does not affect it. Okay. Uh, five meters is either distance or displacement or position. Okay. It depends on if I get more information or not. Uh, momentum is a vector. Energy or work. These are scalars. Chapters two to three. Chapters four to five. Chapter seven. Chapter eight. And others will come up as we go. There was one other absolutely incredibly brilliant thing I was going to say. Oh, not as brilliant as I was hoping. There is another term that is often used to describe motion that is not up here. Acceleration. I made a reference to, though sometimes the word can be one or the other. It could be a vector or a scalar because they didn't bother coming up with different terms. Acceleration is one of those examples. There's vector acceleration. That's the word acceleration in case you can't read my handwriting. Uh, acceleration is also the same term for scalar. So we had a problem, how do you know which one is being asked? Well, to eliminate some of the mind reading, you can always ask. Typically in a textbook, uh, you have to pull it from context. Usually textbooks, they're looking for the vector one, but there are ways of differentiating between the two accelerations. The vector acceleration on a test or quiz, you might see an A with the vector symbol over it. And the acceleration scalar, you'll just see the A without the vector symbol. A couple other 
ways of signifying it, uh, what's a vector and what's not, besides just the vocabulary, but that will be the cliffhanger. You keep it coming back tomorrow. Yeah, you can feel the excitement. It's on par with Kubeshot JR. And if you don't know the reference, ask your parents. Yeah.